very happy new year and welcome to our online worship for all service. I hope you had a really great Christmas. We now stand at the dawn of a new year. We may have plans and hopes. We may know some of what to expect and some of what will happen. But we enter it not fully knowing what it will hold. So we look forward with faith knowing that Jesus, our beginning and our ending, journeys with us and calls us to follow him, the Good Shepherd, whose plans are always for our good and whose promises are secure. As we come to worship the Lord at the start of this new year, let us seek his grace to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Eternal Lord God, we give you thanks for bringing us through the challenges of time to the beginning of another year. Forgive us the wrong we have done in the year that is past and help us to spend the rest of our days to your honour and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let, Let us, us rejoice and sing God's praise for heaven. today's crafts what are we making Benjamin we're making stars we're gonna make a star to hang in your window yeah um, oh, is this for our living room no it's not where is it it's going in daddy's office oh are you ready so the first thing we've got we've cut out a star shape so it's a template it's about a centimeter this is about the width of about a centimeter I just got a um, template from um, Google <laughs> and then cut that out and then cut out a, a centimetre round edge. We then have some sticky back plastic. If you don't have sticky back plastic, you can always use a piece of clear cellophane, like some old wrapping and use some PVA. Um, but we're gonna use the, the really super quick crafts way. So we're gonna take off the backing nice and slowly oh because it's all sticky otherwise and then we're going to stick it down so the shiny side faces down just got to make sure because because mummy cut this out already didn't she 
but to make sure that we line it up so that we're all inside the sticky back plastic and we're nice and flat. Then you can use any colour of these. Yeah, so we've got We some... have pink. We have lots of colours, don't we? Green. Blue. And yellow. We might even have some purple. No, we don't, no, we don't have purple. We... If you haven't, you don't have to necessarily. So we had some in our craft cupboard, some cellophane, which is cut down into little pieces. Come probably start. from, you start layering that up, possibly from last year. Um, but you could equally have you saved your wrappers from your roses that you've had in your Christmas boxes, if, you, if they still have cellophane. Um, and as you can see, Benjamin is just layering up those colours going so we're going to fill in the entire star don't worry if they get bent over don't worry if they go over the edge because we'll be trimming the edge when we're done don't worry just let it just let it go don't worry shall i put some on no oh okay go on then you carry on <laughs> some ribbon and I'm just going to cut some ribbon you could use some string or embroidery thread works really well and all we're going to do with the ribbon is make a loop that we can then use to hang our decoration with <laughs> So you can see that we've just hooked the ribbon hey, what? Oh, onto oh, the, yeah. just keep your finger there, oh, <laughs> Benjamin's okay. finger's getting stuck and we filled in all of the star. Like Sheet of sticky back plastic, yes right, now I'm going to stick it from there, right you can keep your finger up. Our sticky back plastic, and then we're going to stop. <laughs> no, we're done. Now we are done. We're going to cut around the edge. Of um, and once you've cut out all around your star, it will be ready to display somewhere. Um, it looks really good if you put it up on a window and shine the light behind it. Um, but that is basically the end of the crafts. Happy New Year. Let's pray. Lord, may these words glorify your name and help us to learn a little bit more about you. Amen. We're continuing our series thinking about the way people of the Nativity heard from God and how he speaks to us today. And today thinking about how God uses nature to speak to us. And I'm bringing you this in a special discount New Year sermon offer of two short talks for the price of one. So we're up to the wise men, the Magi. Who can seem like a strange group of people to play such a big part in Christian scripture, never mind the greatest story ever told. Because although highly educated, wealthy and important, they were a group of magicians and astrologers and certainly today we can associate these things with trickery, misleading, somehow taking advantage of people and at best purely entertainment. As Christians, we know that doing things like reading our horoscopes or experimenting with the dark arts leaves us open to the enemy. And that behind things like star signs or fortune telling, there are well-developed, clever tricks of the mind that can make the broadest of statements 
feel personal, particularly to those most vulnerable. Matthew 2 verse 2 says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. They saw the star because they were looking, studying the night sky. But they understood its significance because they were familiar with scripture and what had been prophesied. We're reminded of this later in Matthew 2 verse 5. For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. This confirmed to them that the star was a sign from God and was not simply imagined by the Magi or interpreted in a way that fit in with their own hopes or desires. And after all, the journey they would make to follow the star would not have been easy. But they were on a quest to find the Messiah, worship him and deliver their gifts. This reminds me of a few classic movies that you may well have settled down to watch over the, over the festive period. Similarities can be made in stories like The Wizard of Oz, where instead of a star, Dorothy follows the yellow brick road, and reaching the Emerald City, like reaching the palace of King Herod, is not the right place because she finds the wizard is fake and cannot help her, and King Herod too, was not genuine in his desire to worship the newborn king. Dorothy eventually gets home and realises that she had everything she needed in her family. As for the Magi, God warns them to go home a different way, not back to Herod. And we hope that through their experience, they were transformed. Maybe you can relate to some of the experiences in these stories. Searching for a sign from God, realising what is truly important and overcoming difficult encounters along the path to Christ. Let's have a short break from me and I'll be back with your two for one special offer soon. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring Before you We live for you. 
So they had seen a sign from God, the star. It must have filled them with such a sense of awe and amazement at its beauty. But what is awe? Well, it describes an intense, complicated emotion that is often combined with an awareness of God as divine creator and his superiority. It's an unusual emotion because it can feel both positive and negative, reassuring that there is a higher power and that we are part of something much bigger than ourselves, or intimidating with the vastness of creation, feeling overwhelmed or not worthy. And although it's been added to a slightly Americanized vocabulary, we use the word awesome to describe God and when worshipping and praising him. When was the last time you were filled with awe? Where were you when this happened? Research suggests that it can be experienced when faced with man-made objects, but is significantly more likely to happen in nature. Think about a moment when a place or feature in the world around us has just simply taken your breath away. A word that often appears alongside awe is wonder. And this is something that is stirred up from within us when we ask questions. Wonder is our natural curiosity. It's active thought and engagement in a topic. And it helps motivate discovery. Think of the small child whose instinct it is to ask why and how relentlessly until they are satisfied with an answer. And because the wise men, well, were wise men, maybe they were exactly the right kind of people who would notice the star and be willing to follow it to find out if it meant what they thought and to see the Son of God for themselves. The chorus of the Christmas carol, We Three Kings, states that it was a star of wonder. Perfect for this group who were so keen to discover and learn more. In Psalm 19 we read, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. So perhaps it's no great surprise when God speaks to us this way. With our eyes fixed on him, he appears all around us, in clouds, through the seasons, in the greatest mountain range, the widest, deepest sea, or the pattern of a tiny petal, grains of sand on the beach, or each unique snowflake that falls. And it's multisensory, not just for the eyes, but the touch of the warm sun on our skin, in the taste of a ripe wild blackberry, in the smell of freshly cut grass, the sound of the early morning bird song. Many of the signs from God we have looked at over the past few weeks have been directly sent to specific individuals. And this is known as special revelations, in dreams or through angels. But in the case of God speaking to us through his creation, this is known as general revelation, because it's there for everyone to witness. But despite this, God does speak individually through it, in how with scripture we discern its meaning. Recently I've been supporting some students at school that arrived speaking little or no English, and so in our first few sessions I relied heavily on visual prompts and images, gestures, to go along with the spoken and then written word. I really like the idea that general revelation in nature is for everyone. It's not bound by language, age or understanding, just a heart for God. So as we all think about the year ahead, don't look to false prophets because the enemy can work through them. Instead, maybe go outside, look around and think how God could be telling you something through his wonderful creation. And if you see him there, talk to other people about it and pray. I'll finish with the words from Psalm 19, verse 1 to 6. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. 
yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes a circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Amen. God sent a star. At Christmas, God sent a star with love. Christmas joy, carols, church bells and candlelight. Goodness, gentleness and peace from above. God made a star and said to the wise men and us earthly folk, Follow the star with faith, love truth and hope. God left a star. As fairy lights dim, the Christmas sparkle fades. The shops will turn from Christmas gifts to sales, but the star God left will still beckon us through the winter gales. There was a star. We journey forward with resolution, purpose and grace. But will our new year purpose soon fade? Will our faith weaken in the gloomy dark days? Maybe, but we know the star will still be there in wonder, love and blaze. The bright star will still blaze and lead us to Lenten days. Lenten days of hope and preparation for the Easter star for which we will be waiting. The Easter star for which we will be waiting. An empty cross in Easter skies. An empty tomb on Easter morn. The Easter star revealed as truth, love and hope is risen and reborn. Risen will be the Easter star as we kneel and worship with faith anew. God is love and love will come among us as we worship our Saviour true. God made a great star and says to us earthly folk, follow the great star throughout another year. Follow its light with steady step and true. Follow, follow, and it will guide you home and strengthen your faith anew.
Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. We say together. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may trace me, in all that I do, and in all that I may ensure, when there is work for me, and when there is none, when I am troubled, and when I am at peace, your will be done. When I am valued, and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment, and when it is done. When I have all things, and when I have nothing, I willingly offer all that I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. As we head into this new year, having renewed our commitment to love and serve the Lord, may God the Father keep you in all your days. May God the Son shield you in all your ways. May God the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you the blessings and light. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.